Hello, welcome to another Polestar 2 update. I'm outside because we're still here in lockdown in the UK, but I thought I would talk to you about the latest software updates for the Polestar 2 as of February 2021. Right, so I'm not sure how meaningful this first update of this kind is going to be on the channel. Moving forward, hopefully when I can use the car more and travel around and kind of get even more familiar with the vehicle, I'll be able to spot things a little bit easier. Still, uh, I'm trying to see how many miles I've done now. 292 miles we've done, so um, not very many miles. But most people who has a Polestar 2 right now, if you haven't taken it into the dealers, you're going to be running software version P2043.1. I've recently been to the dealers for, well, for a kind of semi-failed visit, which I've covered in a different video, but I was able to get the software update P2104.1, which will be an over-the-air update in February. So I thought I'd cover off what's included in this update, take you through what I can see in the center console on the dash, to see if we can easily spot uh, any variances. As mentioned before, there's lots of things I still haven't done with this car due to being locked down. So I still haven't used the DC charger. I haven't used it loads at night to verify how good or different cameras are and all this kind of thing. But yeah, those things will improve over time. So I'll put this information up on the screen as well before we kind of turn the camera around to look at the main console. But these are the updates that's included in this P2104.1. Okay, the first thing to say is right now, it's not obvious for you to tell what exact version of software you have on your Polestar 2. You can see what version of software the Android operating system is on, which is your current key indicator, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, but for now, you still can't see the current Polestar 2 software version, which they say they will kind of fix in the future. So. Release notes for this version are Android 10Q, admin privileges for vehicle profiles, allows the profile owner to do a factory reset, Harman Kardon premium audio, enhanced surround, for the radio, FM and DAB linking for seamless listening experience, note the radio favourites will be erased and need to be reprogrammed, air quality visualisation in China only, kind of shame we don't get that here I guess. Climate timers have got stability improvements. The 360 camera has had quality and stability improvements. Bluetooth, phone favorite contacts now sync with the car, general quality and stability improvements. The owner's manual has had some quality improvements. There's quite a few issues with the manuals not working uh, with the last update. Um, connected safety, Europe, North America, Cloud-based safety information share between Polestar and Volvo vehicles will help improve driving safety by warning other drivers of potential hazards. Be interested to see how that works out. Some range improvements, which I have seen if you saw my last video. Again, not a scientific test, but did see some uh, efficiency improvements. DC charging, incremental speed improvements. So that'd be interesting. Again, I've not been able to do a DC charge yet. And AC charging stability improvements. I'm trying to think. I have done one little overnight charge since I had the software update, but personally I've not seen any charging issues myself. So that's Parking it. Mode on. <laughs> Gonna turn the camera around now, first so that we can see uh, the driver's binnacle, and then we'll go over to the main touchscreen and go through the different options so we can see if there's anything glaringly obvious. Okay, start off with the driver's binnacle here. So the first mode, to me, look, everything looks exactly the same. Second mode again, everything looks the same. Third, the only thing a couple of people have said that the, the map now takes up even more of the screen, so all the way around more into the corners as opposed to being cut off. Personally, I can't remember exactly what that looked like before to really gauge if things are any different or not. Let's move over now to the main screen and take you through all the menu options. Okay, so apologies, I don't have my tripod for this, which I will definitely make sure I grab in the future. But let's just go through the uh, initial options. So if we turn it into the climate, all of this looks exactly the same to me. No no difference in, in terms of how this is all operating. Going to parking mode, 
uh, what's currently happening. Obviously, I've got the HVAC off at the moment because it's a bit noisy otherwise. Um, we have schedule. I currently don't have any timers set. I don't, don't use this functionality. But again, because I've not used this before, I'm not sure if it's any different. Please leave comments below if you've been using this on the regular. But I don't uh, use any of that. And uh, the preheating and cooling, I've used that once. It all looks the same as well. And in terms of the settings, again, from memory, that all looks exactly the same as well. Back to the home screen. I'm pretty sure this hasn't changed at all either. All this information is exactly as it was before. If we go into the camera settings, the only thing that I've noticed personally, I don't think that the picture's particularly any clearer. If I put it into reverse so you can see the different options, I don't remember seeing this front wheel kind of movement bar before, which, which we now see. So that, that may be a new thing. If we look at the quality of the rear view camera, that's a thing that a few people have mentioned. I never thought it was that bad. It's just not that great at nighttime. And I will do a, a nighttime overlay as well to show the difference. I don't think it's made that much difference. Little things, um, again, if you've got the tow bar and stuff, you can adjust the camera settings here, but again, I don't think that's new. Go into 360 view. I don't know how it kind of splits the screen up. I think it's a little bit odd. One thing I would like to be able to do in the future, be like on my wife's Nissan Leaf, that I could have the rear view kind of real clear and then 360 on the side or something. I think that works really well. But yeah, that's it for the 360 camera. In terms of the drive settings, everything is exactly the same again. One little side note that I don't think I've mentioned before that again, it's just a, a little quirk that I'd like them to fix or maybe improve one day is that you can see this car here is black. We can see this car here is white. We can see this car here is also black. My car is blue. I wish that, um, we'd have some consistency, either all the same colors, or ideally the color of your actual car would be quite nice. But yeah, this is all the same. Assist, I don't think this is any different either from memory. Again, because I've not driven the car lots, I don't recall seeing any specific differences in here. I've never ever had any speed camera warnings ever. Again, not done loads of miles, but I've been past places that definitely have speed cameras and never seen those options work or do anything. Charging screen, no difference in here as far as I've been able to tell. I know some people have um, had sometimes charge limits not working properly or an ability to adjust the ampage. I've never had any problems with that, always been at 32 amps. Personally, I always charge to 80, unless I need to do a really long journey, which obviously isn't happening right now. As you can see, I'm sorry at 46% because that, that's plenty of uh, range if I may need to emergency pop down somewhere of, with lockdown. In terms of the more option, again, each of these, I've not noticed anything different in here. Can we go through them just in case you spot something that I haven't? I think this reduced guard thing is something to do with the uh, the alarm, but again, that, that's one thing that would be nice on the car. If there was like a little eye that you could press to then give you more information about each of the features, but unfortunately you have to just look in the manual instead. Okay, exterior lights. Okay, all this stuff. Again, for me, not notice any difference in this section. If we go into the apps screen, there has been an update to Google Maps, which improves the, the route calculations a little bit. But again, apart from that, everything seems to be exactly the same. The manual here is now working, whereas before people had issues with it not working, but 
seems to work fine now which is good back into here That's where we, um, the Play Store again not expect anything in here but again there's not really many apps that you can choose from right now there are there have been a couple of changes in here that I have spotted because areas that I spent a bit more time in so this didn't used to be called car sim data I think it used to be called GSM or something but now that's on or off Wi-Fi um, this is working much much better than it used to be you can see up here I'm currently connected to Wi-Fi which is why you don't see the LTE option just there if we just go back here into Bluetooth again my phone always connected without any issues I've got an iPhone 8 plus which you can just see charging the little dock there that's why you have this little icon at the top which shows is shows it's doing the uh, the charging there uh, into sound this is something that obviously has changed and is obvious to see is this is all working as expected now we have this surround option where you can kind of tweak and modify the surround immersiveness personally it does sound a little bit different I think the sound system is actually pretty good in here I haven't messed around with loads but I don't know if this is really a, a massive improvement but again it's all good um, these are all exactly the same as well and how we can set the volumes no changes noticed in there display again not really a lot to talk about we can configure some more things on the uh, dash computer stuff but I've just left this all as standard right now assistant and voice input again I've not noticed any difference in that one that will look exactly the same to me as before apps and notifications again I've looked through here nothing special that I've noticed has changed in there either previously in data sharings this all seems the same as it always was I haven't again not noticed any issues or problems in any of that section the Google piece again that will look exactly the same as well not just any changes uh, for the user in there there is a little bit of information that's changed uh, on this page so languages and inputs that seems to be exactly the same as it was before date and time again also the same then we have oh that's just one thing with the date and time I wish if you weren't using 24 hour format like I I don't like the 24 hour format um, if it said a.m. or p.m. up there but again not the end of the world it just it's weird because it implies that it would like 1 p.m. but it doesn't it's kind of strange but yeah not the end of the world um, into the about section so this is really the main area you're gonna see a difference when you're checking out your car so we can see here Android 10 uh, 1st of December 2020 patch level this is how you know you've got the most latest software version as of the time of doing this video right now again nothing to do with the Polestar software version just the Android version there used to be a, a Wi-Fi Mac address piece down here as well that's completely gone never had any information in there anyway um, that was never displayed but yeah you can see uh, the rest of the information there storage not much any difference in there either 36 gigabytes of storage available still on the system we've got the reset options and legal information but yeah that's it I think we've been through everything that's just my profile information where again we could mess around with some settings for the profiles but apart from that no change so that's the end of the video like I mentioned I'm not sure how helpful it is right now um, to show you what you already know or perhaps a couple of things that you haven't got if you're not running the latest and greatest software updates the main things for me are the fact that, again it does seem a little bit more fuel efficient fuel efficient energy efficient I should say um, but everything else again touch wood I've not had that many kind of real issues or problems with my Polestar 2 still enjoying the car just wish it was possible for me to drive it a bit more but yeah one thing that would be great if Polestar 
kind of do a little bit like what Tesla did. I used to have a Tesla Model S before, which I guess why I'm referencing it is they would show on the screen after there'd been a software update, which um, Pulsar don't do as well as showing some information um, about what the software update does. One thing I just remembered that I don't think I showed in here. That's right, let me just show you now. So in the software update screen, you used to be able to go to that and it would show when it last checked in for a software update and you could press a button to see if there was any new update and it would say, no, you're running the latest version of the software. They've got rid of that now. So you now just have this software update screen, which by default has been set to off and you can turn it to on, but there's no way for you to see that, again, as far as the car's concerned, it's running the latest software update um, and you can't kind of ask it to check. So it's certainly kind of seems to me odd that they've taken it away. I'm not sure if it's a Android update version that Android 10 doesn't support that. I don't know, I'm, I'm not an Android user uh, outside of this car, so I can't really comment on that. I'll just swing the camera around so that you can quickly see that. So there is the, the screen. So again, by default, when I got the car back, it was in off mode, I put it to on, but you can't see kind of anything else about whether the software update is available or not. So thanks as always for watching. More Polestar 2 related videos coming. Uh, a few more things that I want to kind of check out and talk about. But yeah, that was it for this upcoming update. Again, like I said, if you haven't got this already, I wouldn't take the trip to the dealers specifically for this software update unless you have something else going on. But, you know, you do what you feel is best. But I think by the end of February, if you have over the air updates, software versions available, then um, you will get this pushed to your car. So, yep, look after yourself. Leave a thumbs up, like, share, comment, and uh, catch you on the next one.